It seems that plants, just like us, have the ability to lie. This may actually give us some insight into why empathy developed in us. Putting yourself in someone else's shoes can be weaponized. This can be done in interpersonal relationships or it can happen on a larger stage. Let's talk about plants. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. The secret life of plants set back this field decades. A biologist said a bunch of things that he didn't really have evidence for. As a result, we're only now recovering. Yes, plants really are interconnected by mycorrhizal networks, systems of fungus that send signals back and forth. We've known for a long time that plants communicate in other ways. They can send out ultrasonic shrieks and tell other neighboring plants that they're in danger. If one plant is getting munched on by a caterpillar, they can start sending out distress signals. Other plants will receive them and start preparing. They can do things like making toxins or pulling resources away from their leaves. This will help conserve energy. More recently, it was discovered that plants have the capacity to lie about these things. If a plant lies about the conditions they're in and other competitors start putting in this very costly process of preparing for it, they may be able to get an edge. It seems they can send these signals through the mycorrhizal network. What I find really interesting about this phenomenon is how it relates to us. Empathy is core to human interaction. In fact, we start to develop empathy around the age of six months. Yes, even babies have a physical reaction to watching someone else be harmed. However, empathy too can be hijacked. There is manipulation in everything us humans do. When a child starts crying because they really wanted that cookie, that's weaponization of empathy. There's been a lot of talk about why we developed empathy. Indeed, it is very disturbing when somebody doesn't have it. We call those people psychopaths. A lot of evolutionary biologists believe that it's something that keeps our babies alive. We react to cute little infant animals. Empathy may have evolved as a defense mechanism. We like to think about animals which are able to form bonds as being ones that take care of their offspring. I have heard some talk that crocodiles make okay pets. They do indeed take care of their young, and they do a pretty good job of it, even if they might eat them later. Now, whether we like to admit it or not, we all weaponize empathy. This is what you do when you call sick out of work. Maybe you ham it up a little bit and cough into the phone. I'm sorry, I can't come in today. These are things that we do every day. Our own empathy makes us susceptible to deception. This happens on the political stage in news stories. It goes all the way down to puff pieces about dogs that have been adopted from the shelter after being abandoned. Your attention, your views, are being sought after with the weaponization of empathy. And indeed, this is used as a political tool. But if we bring it back to plants, why would a plant want to put itself in someone else's shoes? Well, it alerts them of dangers. If you're capable of feeling someone else's pain, you're also capable of being alerted to what might harm you. So it may not just be that we developed empathy so that we didn't eat our offspring, and indeed a lot of animals still do eat their offspring, including people at times. It may have also evolved as a threat detection system. I am really trying to talk about this stuff in a way that doesn't piss people off because nobody likes being deceived. 